Good morning. Good morning. We're seeking the Lord's house today. I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity to allow me and my family to come back and be a part of uh, the church and be a part of the, the fellowship. We sure do appreciate it. And uh, we appreciate the opportunity to always share the, uh, the word of God. I appreciate the good singing and everything. I know the kids enjoyed the, the donuts. I tell you, I, I, I tell you when... Last time we came, we had lunch. This time we came, we had uh, uh, donuts. I, th I think you can't get any better than that. So, uh, but we do appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity uh, to share the Word of God, and I appreciate the good singing and the good fellowship that we've had thus far. Uh, we want to uh, talk to you this morning. Uh, it's familiar scripture, I think. It's a it's a type of scripture or the uh, uh, a story that I've come to. To, to love, to learn from, and uh, I want to share it uh, to you this morning. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn, we're going to be in Mark chapter 4. Uh, we're going to read verses 35 through 41. Uh, this is the, uh, the message we want to share with you, and uh, we hope that we can offer you something that will encourage you, uh, that when you leave here you can be uplifted and you can go out, because I guarantee you that each and every one of us is going to face something this next week that hopefully we can revert our minds back to and we can think about this story of what's happening here in the in the book of uh, Mark chapter 4. It, it talks about in Mark chapter 4 beginning in verse 35. I want to read 35 through 41 and then we'll pray. It says this, And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when, and when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and said to him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? You think about that. The, they were in a place where they said, You know what? There's no hope. But they saw that the God of heaven was able to bring them out of anything to the point they said, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? I want us to pray this morning before we get into the message. I want to pray God's <laughs> blessings upon each and every one of us. Father, we love you this morning. We do thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be with your people. Lord, to have this fellowship, this time, Lord, that we can dedicate to you, God. This is not about us. It's not about the preaching, the singing, the, the fellowship. It's not about any of that. What it's about is about you speaking to us today. And God, I ask you, Lord, as we've dedicated this time, Lord, that you might come down, that you might speak peace to our souls. Just as you did that sea that day. God, I ask you, Lord, that you would look inside of our hearts, that you would see all the things that we're worried about, that we're concerned about, that's heavy on our heart today. And I pray, God, that you would speak those words. God, that that storm or that sea or those emotions, God, might be calm today. We thank you, Lord, that you love us, that you care for us. We thank you, Lord, that you're willing to spend time with your people today. And I ask you, Lord, as we try our best and we and we do everything that we can to relate this message to your people, God, you do the preaching, you do the helping, you do the encouraging, God, because without you, we're nothing. I ask you, Lord, to continue to bless this people, that uh, you would continue to bless this church, continue to use it, God. And Lord, I pray, God, give them a direction. God, give them something that they can grab onto to know that you're going to be with them no matter what. God, I ask you, Lord, for each person that's walked through that door this morning. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just minister to them, speak to them. God, in a way that I can't, that nobody else can. God, I pray, Lord, just be with them and touch them and encourage them. Once again, bless your message this morning. Bless the scripture, bless the reading of your word and the preaching that we're about to do. Help us to preach in spirit and in truth. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
If I were to title the message this morning, I would simply say the same words that Jesus said when he said, Peace, be still. When you begin to think about it this morning, I, I, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about the idea of choices that we have. The fact of the matter is, is that we all have this choice or these choices that we have to make. There are small choices that we make every day of our life. What we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, what time we're going to bed, what time we're getting up. The thing about it is, is we don't always do as planned. How many of us this morning set our alarm clock, but yet we hit snooze? I'm bad about that during the during the, the uh, uh, during the work days. Sometimes I'll hit it a couple times, and you know what I'll have to do? I have to rush to get ready to be on time, or somewhat be on time. You think about it, our choices can range from something that's very insignificant to something that's very important. Think about this. What are we spending our time doing? That's an important question or an important choice that we've got to make. Those choices can range from things that really doesn't matter to things that are extremely important. Our choices this morning can affect everybody around us. Have you ever come in contact with somebody and they say, you know, the choices that I make, it only affects me. Let me tell you, that's so wrong this morning. The things that I do affects my children. The things that I do affects my wife. The things that I do affects my church. The things that I do affects my family and everybody around me. The choices that we make are something that we've got to think about. I believe that there are things that you and I might be facing right now that the choices we make might determine the direction that we're going to be going in. You think about it, you guys said you are having a business meeting. There's no doubt you're going to make some choices, and those choices are going to have an impact on the church and people that you're going to eventually reach. We've got to make the right choices. The thing about it is, is so many people are making wrong choices today. You think about it, the, the choices that people make, the choices that people are making right now are having an impact on everybody around them. You think about it, the, the, the place that America is in now, the nation, the, the way that we're going and the direction that we're going in, it's based on choices that's already been made and choices that are continuing to be made. The, the idea that I want to pose to you this morning is that we all have choices. We all have things that we need to be doing. You say, how does this play into the scripture this morning? The Bible says this. And in the same day the evening was come, they said unto them, this is Jesus talking to him. He said, let us pass over unto the other side. Anywhere God takes you, there's going to be some risk. Anywhere you go with God, you're going to have to step out in faith. They had no idea what they would be facing. In my mind, I probably thought, I, I, I probably think that they were thinking at that particular time, we're going to get in the boat, we're just going to peacefully sail to the other side, and everything's going to be okay. But what if they knew that that big storm was coming? I wonder how many of them would have got on the boat. How many times does God not show us everything because we're scared to death of what might happen? I, I think about this a lot of times. When God began to call me to preach when I was around 19 years old, if he had laid everything out in front of me, and he would have said, this would have happened in your life, and these things are going to take place, and, and, and all of this is going to happen. You know what I would probably say? No, oh, thanks, God. No. I, I, I think I'll just sit right here in the pew, and everything will be okay. The, the idea of it is is that sometimes we've got to step out in faith and we don't know what's going to happen. How many times as you as a family have made a decision and we say, you know what, I don't know exactly what's going to take place, but I've prayed over this and I've asked God to help me with this and I'm going to make this decision. The idea with the uh, 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 starting the church, you think about it, how, scared, uh, how scary that must be to say, you know what, we're going to start a church. You know what? The, the thing about it is, is, as I preach at different churches, and I'll fill in sometimes, and, it, and it's like this everywhere, it's hard to get people to come to church. It's hard. It's hard to, to get them involved to come to this thing that's called church or this worship service that we're going to have. But you know what? God still called us to do it. 
The idea of whether a, a, a church stays uh, around 50 or whether they get to 500 or 5,000, it doesn't matter. What God's called us to do is to be faithful at what we're doing. You say, so, so why are we talking about this this morning? Is I want to I ask you, I want to propose this to you, is that we're choosing something each and every day of our life. If we're living for Christ, we're choosing Him. If we've got a warped way of thinking about serving God, that we can come to church on Sunday, that we can live like we want to the rest of the week, we're choosing to do that. I'm telling you this morning that we've got a choice that we've got to make. You see, I like what Joshua said in Joshua chapter 24, verse number 15. He made this statement and he was, he was uh, uh, talking to the, to the people of God there. He was talking to the, uh, uh, God's people, the Israelites, and he made this statement. And we all know this in Joshua 24, verse 15. It says, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, he says, choose you this day. Whom you're going to serve. Whether the God of your fathers that served on the other side of the flood or the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. He said, but as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Joshua was the leader of the people. He was the one that said, you know what? I can make a decision and you're going to do what I told you to do. But that's not what Joshua did. He confronted the people and he said, you've got a choice that you're going to make today. Either you can go back to serving the gods that you once served in Egypt or you can serve the God that I'm going to serve. But he made this decision. He said, I'm going to serve, I'm going to serve God. The thing about it is today is so many times we want to choose for somebody else. The truth of it is, is we can only choose for ourselves. Today as we look in the book of Mark chapter 4, we look at this chapter. I hope that God speaks to each and every one of us this morning. I know that He'll speak, but the thing about it is, are we going to listen today? I encourage you to receive the word that God wants you to receive today. Look at verse number 35. It says, In the same day when the evening was come, He saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. The idea that they were going to be traveling in the evening time or possibly at night. You think about that. Uh, uh, if, if, if you wanted to make it to the other side, in my mind, the best time would, to go would be there in the daytime where you can see. You ever, you ever, you ever uh, 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 I know when I was growing up, I hunted with my dad a lot and, 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 and that we used to go hunting about every weekend during hunting season. And, and I tell you, one of the scariest things to do is to sneak in there in more, uh, early morning before it even gets dark. Try to find your stand. Sometimes you, you say, I know exactly where it's at. And you get down there and you say, it's supposed to be on this tree. But all of a sudden, it ain't on that tree. And, 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 and the idea was, is, it, it, is we stay to almost we can no longer see to walk out at, at dark. If any of you know my dad, you know what kind of prankster he is. And sometimes it, when we walk out, he'd be in the woods or, or, or uh, along the trail when I would walk out. And sometimes he'd have an old crow call or something like that. And he would do that as I was walking out. And I have told him, I said, you're going to get shot one of these days. <laughs> The idea is if you're going to travel, the, the idea is to do it during the daytime where you can see and do those things. But the, the thing about it is, it, it's Jesus said, we're, when it was going to get evening time, he said, I want us to go over to the other side. Think about this. Jesus knew exactly what they were about to go through, but he was wanting to teach them. And I want you to think about this. How many of us are going through something this morning and we don't understand why we're going. We don't understand why we're dealing with it. Yet it might be God wanting to teach us some things. You see, it says, He saith unto them. He was speaking directly to them. He said, I want us to go to the other side. You see, the thing about it this morning is God still speaks to His people. In John 10, verse 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. This is something that Jesus is still doing. He's still speaking to us today. He's wanting to communicate with us. He desires to have a relationship with us. But the thing that we've got to ask ourselves, are we listening? Are we willing to obey? How many of us today, God is trying to tell us, will you go to the other side? Will you get in the boat with me? Will you trust me? Will you put your life in my hands? Yet, how many times do we hold back? We say, I'm just not ready to do that. I, I'm not ready to do those things. 
See, I, I can remember my kids growing up and they're still some, somehow this way. If, if there's anything they're a little bit scared to do and I might be sitting there ready to catch them. You know what they're doing? They're, 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 on, the, they're, they're on the edge. They're saying, I, I, I know daddy's there, but I'm, I'm scared to do this. I wonder how many of us are doing that same thing today in our spiritual lives. We, we know the scripture. We know what God has said. We've heard testimonies of how people have stepped out. Yet we're scared ourselves to step out and say, I'm going to trust God and I'm going to believe Him. God communicates to His children. In verse 35, He speaks to His disciples and He instructs them what to do. And, and, and it's the same way today. God is telling each and every one of us today what to do. Yet the thing of, of it is, is sometimes we're not listening. You say, I never do that. My kids do it all the time. I want to tell you, if I tell them to do something, I tell them to go clean their room. You know what they're doing? They're, they're choosing not to hear me. Yet if I say, load up in the car, we're going to get ice cream. I can whisper that. And somehow throughout the house, they hear it. You know why? Because it's something that they want to hear. It's the same way with God. If God tells us, you know what, I, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to give you, I, I'm going to pay your bills this week, we'll say, God, I hear you, thank you, Lord. Yet, if God says, you know what, I'm going to bring you through this tough time so that somebody else can be used because of your testimony. I didn't hear that, God. I, I don't want to accept that. You see, the idea was they were wanting to go to the other side. You see, that God was telling them, Christ was saying, let us pass over to the other side. You see, in verse 35, he tells, him, he tells his disciples what to do. And this is some good stuff right here. He said, I want you to go to the other side. I like that this morning. Why? Because that's the type of God that we serve. That we serve a God that wants to take us to the other side. He doesn't want us to stay in the same place that we're in right now. He doesn't want our family to stay in the same place. He doesn't want our church to stay in the same place. He doesn't want each and every one of us to stay in the same place. What does He want us to do? He wants to take us to the other side. You say, what are you talking about? The other side of what? The other side of our problems. The other side of our cares. The other side of our current situation. The thing that you're going through right now is not what God wants you to stay in. He's got something else for us. Every one of us, He's got something better. How many of us have, have woken up in the morning time and we've gotten up and we say, I sure don't want to do this. I do the same old stuff. I, I, I go through the same old stuff. My, th this part of my body is hurt like it's always always has. And I don't know what's going on. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know how I'm going to do this. We think about it all the time. You know what? And we'll do. We're, we're creatures of habit. We'll stay in the same thing doing the same old stuff. Do you, do you know people? And you might be one of these the types of people. You say, well, you know, I, I go to the same restaurant because I know what they have. I don't want to ever try anything different. Sometimes I can get that way. I can say, you know what? This place got a good stay. I, I, I'll go there instead of going somewhere else. You see, we, we get in this we get in this same routine. My wife will tell you, I got this thing. I I, I like to, I like stuff to be just like that. I get up in the morning time. She can just about tell you my same routine. That that. I get up, I go brush my teeth, I start laying things out, I have to put in contact. I've got stuff that i got laid out, I'll get in the shower, I'll get out, I'll do a same routine. Yet she can do stuff totally the opposite. And it drives me crazy. <laughs> she, she, it, 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 mine is laid out just like this. Yet hers is just scattered all over the place. Sometimes I wish I was more like that. But the, but the idea is so many times we think we've got to do something just like this. Yet sometimes God wants to take us another route. See, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far exceeding and eternal way of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. How many of us this morning were so caught up in the temporary things? We 
we say, you know what? I've been facing this trial. I've, I've got this care in my life. And it's always been here, seems like. We get caught up into what is a, a, is a temporary thing. But this ought to excite us this morning. To the idea that I want to propose this to you. That what you're facing right now, you're not going to have to face forever. You see, the thing about it is God wants to bring us out. God wants to give us something better. Sure, the devil has tried to make some of us believe that we're always going to have to go through this thing. But the devil's a liar today. God's telling us, let us go into the other side. I've heard it said that if God is, going to will, is willing to bring you to it, he's willing to bring you through it. That means a storm. That means a problem. That means a care. That means a sickness. That means that God is not done with us just because we're struggling right now. The other side of your storm, the other side of your problem, your care, your heartaches, that's where God wants to take us. What I like about verse 35 is he didn't say, I want you to pass over to the other side. I want you to look closely at what he says in verse 35. These, these uh, words are in red. This means that Jesus spoke this. He says, let us pass over unto the other side. He didn't tell the disciples, get in the boat and try to make it to the other side. He said, get in the boat with me and you and I will go to the other side. That's the kind of God that we serve this morning. Just because we're going through something terrible doesn't mean that God's not with us. It says in Scripture that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. There is a promise written in God's Word that God will always be there and He'll always be there for us. It says in verse 36, And when they were sent away the multitude, they took Him even as He was in the ship, and there were also other little ships with Him. That, that, that there was people around him. There was other little ships. They were going to the other side. They were being good little disciples. They got into the boat and they said, surely if we're with Christ, everything's going to be good. How many times do we think that same way? How many preachers do you turn on the TV and they'll say, you know what, everything's going to be good. You, you, you do this and God will take care of you and you won't ever have to go through anything. Let me tell you, that's, that's, that's not what God's Word really teaches. Here, they were doing what God wanted them to do. In verse 37, look at this. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. They got out there in the sea. There came a storm. The winds began to blow. The rain began to come down. And it says that basically the ship got to the point that it was full. I don't know a lot about fishing as much as I need to, but I do know one thing. If I get out there in the, in, in, in the lake and my boat starts to fill up, whether there's a storm or whether there's not, I know in my mind that's not a good thing. What happens? You begin to sing. Think about this. They, they were doing what God wanted them to do, yet they found themselves in a great storm. The wind was blowing. The waves were beating on the ship, and the ship was probably filling up with water. Have you ever felt like that it seemed like you were going down in the, this walk of life? Like, like you were going down, like you felt things were over. Maybe you're right there this morning. Maybe verse 37 begins to describe your life just this morning. It's a terrible feeling, but I want to remind you of something. The disciples were exactly where God wanted them to be. Yet they found themselves in this in this thing. One of the things that I've learned, some of the greatest storms that you'll ever go through is when you're in the center of God's will. Let me tell you, the disciples couldn't have been in a safer place. Yet in their mind, they're scared to death. Yet in their mind, they're going down. They're about to die. They're about to uh, uh, not ever see their family again. You know why? Because everything was falling out from under them. Yet when you think about it, they were in the safest place that they could possibly be. They were with Christ. They were in the center of God's will. Verse 38 says this. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow. And they wake him. And they say unto him, Master, cares not that we perish. Think about this. If I was on a boat and, and, and all of this was going on, you know what? I'd participate in all the craziness that was going on. I'd say, you know what? We are going down. You know, we, we, are, we are about to die. 
But you know what Jesus was doing? The Bible says he was in the back part of the ship asleep on the pillow. Let me tell you, he wasn't worried about what was going to happen because he knew that he was able to take care of anything. He knew that there was nothing to worry about. That's the same way it is in our life. When we get a, 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 a decision from the doctor and the doctor says, you've got to face this and you've got to go through that. You know what we do? We believe the doctor. We say, you know, we got some bad news. Instead of believing what God says. In their mind, they thought they were about to go down. Yet Christ was back there asleep on the pillow. See, the disciples were terrified, but Christ wasn't. Most, if not all the time, that's how we are in our situation. When anything goes wrong, we begin to fret. We begin to worry. But the thing about it is, is Christ is not worried about the situation that you're in. He's concerned about you, but he's not worried about what's going to happen. That's the difference between him and us today. Is Christ is worried about us. He's concerned about us, but he's not worried about our problems. What he's concerned about is us getting better or us having more faith or us being used by him or us being to the point where we've got more faith in him and less faith in us. I guarantee you that most of us, when we go through a problem, we think within ourselves, what can I do to make this problem better? Instead of calling on God and saying, God, I want you to do something. I would just about guarantee you that everybody in this place is in one of three categories this morning. Either you just came out of a storm, you're about to go into one, or you're in one right now. Mm -hmm. See, the thing about it is life is full of storms. This thing called life, the older I get, the more I begin to realize, is there's not a lot of things down here that's going to bring us joy. There's not a lot of things in this life that we're just going to be able to sail through and everything's going to be great and everything's going to be grand. The thing that I've learned is life is tough sometimes. I hope something that's shared this morning can help encourage you during the time that you're going through. The story that we're looking at this morning is a literal storm. The disciples were caught in a literal storm on the sea that day. There was literal rain and wind and effects that was going on. They were able to see them. They were able to see the, the waves crashing into the ship. They were able to see the water that was filling up in the ship. They were able to feel the winds that were blowing. They saw everything that was going on. Yet the thing that's different about us is sometimes we don't feel the wind. We don't see the rain. We don't see our boat beginning to fill up. Yet we're still in a storm. The storms that I want us to talk about this morning are different. You don't see those things. But the storms that you and I face can be so much worse than things like that. They can be storms that come against our souls. Storms that come against our families, our ministries, our church, people that we know, friends that we care about. You can't literally see those things that are coming, but we hear the effects of it. We see the effects that's going on. When we're upset, our loved ones are upset, we can see those things that's beginning to happen. These storms can almost overwhelm us at times. Look at the, what the disciples thought in verse 38. They thought that they were about to perish. Perish means they thought they were about to die. They were not going to make it. Have you ever felt that way? I sure have. There's been times in my life that I didn't know if I was going to be able to find a way out. I didn't know if there was a way out. Yet I had to rely on God to bring me. There's three things that I want to bring out this morning and we're not going to take much longer, but I want you to think about this. There's three things that we've got to realize in order to face the storm. The first thing is we've got to realize that the spiritual warfare is taking place right now. There's so many times that people go to church and they don't even consider this thing about spiritual warfare. Many will laugh at this thought. They don't believe in it, but the Bible teaches about it. I'm sure that most of us here have experiences that experience this. There is some that's coming against our soul right now. You think about Paul. You know what Paul said? One of the strongest Christians that's ever walked the face of the earth wrote this in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. He says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may well be able to stand against the walls of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Paul, 
He said, I want you to put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because storms are going to come. Hard times are going to come. Things are going to come against our soul. There's spiritual warfare that's taking place right now. Why is it that any time we want to do something good, I guarantee you that, that this morning if we got up and hooked up our boat and went down to the lake and we said we're going to fish this morning instead of going to church, I guarantee you the devil wouldn't have fought us one bit. He'd say, go ahead. It's, it's a perfect day. It's pretty outside. You can catch some big fish. But how many of us this morning, when we got up and said we're going to church, we want to get ready, how many of us have some problems this morning? How many of us came in here, I came in here this morning, and two of, two of my kids acted like they hadn't slept all night. They said, oh, goodness. I'm so tired. Yet, when we get home, Hey, we're going to bring out our iPads. iPads, we're going outside. We're playing. Woo! It's going to be a good time. <laughs> we don't know what I'm talking about. He's sitting there grinning. <laughs> That's how we are a lot of times. If you do anything for, for God, you're going to have some things that come against us. There's no doubt you guys starting this church and trying to build this church and got a direction for this church. There are going to be things that come against up against you to hinder you from doing what God wants you to do. I guarantee you that 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 if you were if, 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 if with you doing something for church, I guarantee you the money's just not flowing that you you want it to be. But you know what? If, if, if if you guys wanted to start a, 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 a club here or a, a, a place to party, or whatever, I'll tell you, they'd be beating down the doors getting in this place. Because that's how it is. When you do anything for God, you're going to have resistance from things of this world. The devil's going to come against you. There's spiritual wickedness. Why is it so hard to reach people in our community? It's because there's a devil out there that's got them blinded. If people knew that one day next week they would die and they would go to a literal place called hell and they realized that and they knew that, chances are they might be here this morning. But you know what the devil's got them thinking? Oh, you've got plenty of time. You don't need to get right with God right now. You don't need to go to church. Yet the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The word devour doesn't mean slap on the hand. It doesn't mean I'm going to hurt your feelings. Devour means I'm taking you down. I want to destroy you. That's the spiritual warfare that's coming against us. In order to face the storm this morning, you've got to realize there's something that's coming against us. Verse 2, or not verse 2, but the second thing this morning is found in verse 38. It says, And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on the pillow. And they awake him and saith unto him, Master, cares not that we perish. The second thing, We've got to realize that we're not alone in this thing called life. That we're not alone in this storm that we're going through. During these storms, I sometimes feel like I'm alone. Sometimes I feel like I might not have anybody that understands. Have you been there? Have you felt like nobody really understands what I'm going through? But God wants you to know something about your situation. And it's just like the disciples. You may ask, what is that this morning? The thing of it is, is he's in the boat with us. <laughs> we might feel like we're the only one in the boat. And the truth of it is, our family might not be in the boat. Our friends might not be in the boat. But there's a God in heaven that's in the boat with us today. Amen. That he walks with us. That he travels with us. That he sails with us. When you're in a storm, he's in a storm today. He's willing to walk alongside of us. It says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 35, let your conversation be with covetous and be content with such things as you have. For I have said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I was talking to someone yesterday. We was talking about this the, the, the heat outside. And we were talking about how we, we sure would be glad when it gets fall. And, and I was talking to her and, and we were bringing this up. And I said, the thing about it is when it gets cold, people are going to say, well, it's too cold. I'll be glad when it gets hot. Yep. 
I'm going to tell you, what, I don't know how many, about every week I hear somebody say, it sure is hot, I'll be glad when fall gets here. I'll be glad when winter gets here. I'll be glad when it cools off. You know what? You know what the Bible says to be content in things that we have. Yet I was telling her, I said, it seems like we are never content in anything. Yet God tells us to be content. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is the writer of Hebrews says about God that God has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The thing about it is the storm that you're in this morning, God's with you. He's always been there with you and he'll always be there for you. You're not alone this morning. The final thing that we want to bring out is that we need to realize that he's in total power over every situation and every storm that we could go in go through. That means everything up to this point, that means anything in front of us, that he's got total power over. You say, how do you know that? God's power is not limited based on your storm. Your storm is not too big for God. Look at what the scripture said. The, the, many of the disciples were, uh, were uh, fishermen. They were experienced fishermen. They knew what it was like for storms to come upon that sea. Yet in that particular case, they thought they were going down. You can be as experienced as you can be in the word of God. Yet a storm will find their way to you. The thing about it is we can grow and we can grow and we can grow in God. Yet the storm that comes against us sometimes may kind of overwhelm us. In verses 39 through 41, he's able to do the same thing in our life. What does those verses say? It says, He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. And he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Have you ever been to the, uh, uh, a storm or care or problem in your life? Maybe you went to the doctor and they told you some bad news. You went home and you worried over it and worried over it and worried over it. And you said, I'm, I'm going to pray over it, but I'm still going to worry over it. I'm going to tell my church to pray for it, but I'm still going to worry over it. And God comes through and God go back to the doctor and the doctor said everything's okay now. Don't it make you feel about this call that you say you know I should have just trusted God instead of worrying about it instead of being upset about it it makes me feel about that little because it's almost like God says I told you if you would just trust me I'd take care of you. But you know what? We want to take care of things ourselves. What I'm trying to tell you this morning, there's going to be storms that come your way that you're not going to be able to handle. These, these disciples, some of them were experienced fishermen. That's what they did for a living. Yet they couldn't get out of the storm themselves. What did they have to do? They had to rely on God. How many of us this morning, we're either going through something like this or we know somebody that is? That there's a storm that we cannot overcome ourselves. Yet we gotta rely on God. How many how many prayer requests did we have this morning? For this amount of people, we had a lot. But you know what? That just goes to show how much is going on in our lives today. I, I raise my hand. You know why? Because I have I have some th some things that's going on in my, in my life. I, I have things that I'm I'm going through. Things that I'm thinking about or caring about or worrying about or however you want to put it. Everybody that walked through the door this morning, if we're really facing life, we're facing storms. The question is, do you need him to speak to you this morning? I'll be honest, I need God to speak to me. This idea of what he says in verse 39 where he said, peace be still. It sure would be good if he spoke that to me this morning. It sure would be good if many of you, if he spoke that to you this morning. Some of you might be going through things and if he could just say, peace be still and everything be okay. Maybe your family, maybe your mom, your dad, your, your children are going through things and if God could just speak those words, everything would be okay. Verse 41 says that the people, the disciples looked at him and said, what manner of man that even the wind and the sea obey him. The thing about it is everything obeys Christ when he speaks. He has control over everything. You say, well, you don't know what the devil wants to do in my life. You don't understand what he is saying in my life. 
when, when Jesus speaks, the devil has to hush. He has power over all spiritual warfare. That includes the devil himself today. Let me tell you, there is no greater authority than the one that we serve today. God has authority and power in our lives. I believe this message is for someone here this morning. Some of us are in storms, and it doesn't appear to be letting up. But we need Christ to speak those words, peace be still. There's some here <clears throat> that maybe have a different storm that's going on in your heart. You're battling over what choice to make. Maybe this morning you, you've walked through those doors and you've never truly been saved. God wants to give you an opportunity this morning. The idea of choices that we talked about earlier is we can make a choice to be saved. But we can also make a choice to reject what Christ is giving us. God wants to bless you this morning. We all have choices to make. Whether we're going through a storm, whether we're going through a problem, whether we're facing a storm of our soul this morning. I want to ask you this. Do you want peace? Some of us may have walked through here with heavy hearts this morning. But God can give us peace and we can walk out of those doors with a peace that passes all understanding. Why? Because that's what God has designed for us. I honestly believe that God wants to help us today. But you've got to surrender everything that you have to Him. The disciples went to a place that He wanted them to go, go to, but they had to go on the ship. They had to surrender all. They had to say, you know what, I'm going with God. I'm not going back. I'm making a choice to go to the other side. You say, why didn't Jesus just wait to the next day? Why didn't He wait till the storm passed over? Why did He do all that? He wanted the disciples to see what kind of person that Christ really was. That he was all man, yet he was all God. Why, why did God want to make go to the other, the other side? This week, if you're curious, curious about that, read chapter 5 of why he had a decision to go to the other side. Why he had a purpose to go to the other side is there was somebody that was over there that had unclean spirits. There was a man over there that was that no man could, could bind him up. He was, he was out of his mind. Yet Christ had to go there and heal that man. There's a reason he had to go to the other side. There's a reason in our lives why we've got to go to the other side. There might be somebody standing on the other side that we need help. The reason that we need to go through the storm, the reason this church might, might, might have some problems right now or some decisions to make and we don't understand things, it, you, you might need to... Be sure to make the right decision because there might be a lot of people standing on the other side that this church is able to reach. you got to keep on keeping on. you got to go to the other side because God wants to do things in our life. Will you, do, will you make a decision today? I want us to have a song of invitation or some music. I know we, we can do something, but I want to give you an opportunity. This morning, whether you want to pray right where you're at, whether you want to come right up here, I want to stand up here, I will pray with you, I'll do whatever I need to do. But the thing about it is you've got to realize there's a storm going on in your life for a reason. There's a purpose, there's a plan that God wants to use you. There is something special, something great inside of you that the reason the devil's fighting against us. Because God wants to do something good inside of us. I want us to pray this morning. And when we get through praying, I want you to stand. And I want you to think about, is there something I need to pray about? Is there something I need to give back to God? Is there something that I need to make a decision on today where God can work in my life? I want us to pray. God, we love you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time in your house. God, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us the opportunity to read from your blessed word this morning. God, I, I, I sure do like this story. I sure do like the scripture that we shared this morning. But I tell you, we can like it all day long. But until we begin to accept it, until we begin to trust you like the disciples eventually had to do, God, we're not going to be able to overcome this. We're not going to be able to get to the other side. God, you see your people in this place this morning. You understand what they're struggling with. You understand what they're going through. God, I pray, Lord, that you begin to speak to their souls. God, that peace that you spoke to the sea that day, speak it to our hearts. 
Speak it to our minds. Speak it to our emotions this morning. God, let everything be at peace. God, you know what's going on in our lives today. You know the decisions that need to be made. You know the prayers that need to be prayed. God, I pray, Lord, just give out your peace in a way that only you can do. God, we give you this time. We've done everything that we know to do. God, we've, we, we've prayed over the service. We, we've sung praise songs to you. We've tried to preach the word. We're giving people this opportunity this morning. An invitation time to come and say, God, I don't want to fight these battles alone. But God, it's left up to us whether we'll surrender everything today. I pray, God, that you deal with hearts. I pray that the good Holy Ghost of God would come down and begin to work in our hearts and speak in our hearts and begin to draw us if we need to be touched this morning. God, I give you this time. I pray, God, that you use it for the uplifting of your kingdom. Bless this church. Bless this people. God, in this time, begin to work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will, stand this morning. I want to give you an opportunity. You can come up here. You can pray.